My first book was published in 1966. The title was I Belandanti, literally, uh, People Who Go for the Good. I was 27. Um, my, uh, let's say, um, encounter with uh, the Benandanti um, came out uh, by pure chance. I believe that chance uh, plays a big role in uh, research. Uh, but uh, chance implies als always an interaction with uh, a, the researcher, which was also the case in, uh, in uh, my encounter with the Benandanti. I uh, decided to, when I was 20, I decided to make a triple decision, suddenly. I mean, I remember this very well. I was a student at the, in Pisa, at the Scuola Normale, um, and uh, I suddenly decided that first I wanted, to, I, try, I wanted to try to become a historian. Secondly, I wanted to work on witchcraft, and thirdly, I wanted to work especially not on the persecution of witchcraft, but um, on the defendants, their beliefs, their attitudes. Anyway, uh, I started, I remember that I, uh, that moment I uh, checked uh, the entry uh, Stregoneria, witchcraft, in the uh, Encyclopedia Italiana, so I was completely ignorant about, about the topic. But I was deeply attracted by the topic for many reasons including, uh, let's say, uh, my early exposure as a child, which uh, was not atypical at all, was obvious, to a lot of, uh, let's say, fairy tales involving witches and so on. Anyway, I started to work on witchcraft in Modena, in northern Italy. Um, and um, I started with uh, an assumption uh, which retrospectively seems to me naive. A sort of, uh, this was a sort of research project uh, which uh, implied a question and uh, also a bias, uh, um, meaning uh, I was deeply Im influenced, like um, I would say every uh, student in my generation in Italy, by Antonio Gramsci's uh, uh, prison notebooks. The Antonio Gramsci, one of the founders of the uh, Italian Communist Party, was put in jail by the fascist regime, and uh, he uh, um, wrote extensively uh, when he was in jail. And uh, when he, d I mean, he died in 1937, and then after the war, after the collapse of the uh, uh, fascist regime, his notebooks were published. And uh, much later, I mean, he became a sort of international figure. But at that moment. Uh, his uh, reception was still very much in Italy. And um, he wrote on uh, um, cultural subaltern classes, um, subordinate, but he used, uh, in order to circumvent uh, uh, the fascist censorship, uh, um, he wrote about uh, subaltern classes. And um, I was very much taken by his notes. So there was this, and then the idea that uh, this was the naive uh, side of my project, that witchcraft could be regarded as a sort of uh, mm, uh, crude early example of uh, class struggle. And uh, what is uh, retrospectively strikes me is that first, uh, I found a trial which confirmed my hypothesis perfectly. Uh, and this was, in fact, uh, the first essay I uh, ever published. And uh, the way it, it was a trial which took place in Modena in, uh, uh, at the beginning of the 16th century, 1519, and it was against uh, a woman, a peasant, uh, who had been accused of witchcraft, of uh, having put a charm against uh, the landlady, because uh, uh, that woman, Chiara Signorini, the peasant, and her husband uh, were ejected by uh, the land. And so, according to the accusation, according to the Inquisition, she had put charms against uh, the landlady in order to re as a revenge, as an act of revenge. Now, I um, wrote that essay, uh, and at the end I said, uh, I wrote, uh, well, this case, um, notwithstanding its uh, specificity, has some general features which could uh, be, uh, which could imply that the case itself is in some way exemplary. It's a paradigmatic case. Now, uh, the, this notion of paradigm uh, is 
today usually associated with uh, a famous book by Thomas Kuhn, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, which in fact focuses on the notion of paradigm. But uh, my reference was not to Kuhn for a very simple reason, because I published the essay one year before Thomas Kuhn. But actually, I didn't use the word paradigmatic in uh, Kuhn's sense. The idea was that decays, and that was a sort of, uh, I mean, I was shooting in the dark, so to speak. I thought that decays was paradigmatic, was exemplary, not because it implied, uh, let's say, uh, that sort of, uh, mm, uh, how can I say, class tension, but uh, for a different, broader reason, meaning uh, a clash between two worldviews, the peasant worldview and the inquisitor worldview. So instead of stressing, and this was made uh, several times, even a few years later, by a famous uh, British historian, Hugh Trevor Roper, that, I mean, uh, uh, in a way there was a sort of a shared uh, world of superstitions uh, um, shared by both the inquisitors and, and the defendants, but, but at different levels, I stress on the contrary the clash. And I think this was very much indebted to Gramsci. So anyway, I uh, had my hypothesis confirmed and I was deeply disappointed. I, I had no research project at that moment, uh, but um, only vague ideas, and I decided to begin uh, a sort of uh, tour across Italy looking for uh, archival fun funds related to the to Inquisition trials. And I started in Venice. So it was in Venice, in the Venice State Archive, and I started to play what I retrospectively called uh, a Venetian roulette. Why? Because, uh, I mean, the fund is uh, mm, enormous. 150 uh, uh, volumes full of uh, dozens of, of trials. Um, every scholar was supposed to ask for a given number, I think four volumes a day. So I had no clues um, except uh, a uh, 19th century handwritten inventory of the fund with a sort of a vague uh, description of every trial, saying magic, heresy. Anyway, and names, but names are known to me. So I had no clue, and I entered uh, every day the archive, and I said, 4, 36, uh, 68, uh, 99. And then I get volumes, and I started to read them. At a certain moment, I came across a short, not even a trial, but an, interrog uh, a, a, an interrogation, um, I think in 1583, uh, against uh, a um, um, young peasant, Menichino dalla, dalla Tisana, and uh, the, tri the interrogation started with the inquisitor asking, are you a benandante? I'd never came, uh, come across uh, this word before. And actually the peasant said, uh, well, I'm not, but uh, people say that the benandanti are people born in a coal, and since they are born in a coal, meaning in the amniotic sac, they are supposed to uh, leave their body in spirit four times a year in order to go to the meadow of Josaphat, in order to fight against the witches. And uh, what is at stake in those fights is the fertility of the crops. And uh, the Benandanti, uh, who are fighting in spirit against the witches, have as a weapon fennel branches, and uh, the uh, witches have sorghum sticks. I read this, and there were further details, and I remember that I left the archive. I was so taken by this discovery that I started to walk in front of the archive across, uh, uh, let's say, um, Across the street in Venice, one of the most uh, close to one of the most marvelous uh, 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 churches in the world, uh, there is a wonderful, famous painting by Titian. Actually, two of them in a polyptych by Giovanni Bellini. And I was uh, at that, that moment, I, I, I was still smoking, and I was, uh, let's say, smoking one cigarette after the other, thinking how lucky I was. Retrospectively, when uh, let's say. Uh, 
not that book, but uh, another book, which was related to the Bellandante discovery, but uh, uh, related to the effort of uh, placing the Bellandante in a much wider, in fact, uh, Eurasian context. When uh, the further book was translated into Japanese, I was invited for the presentation of the book in Tokyo. And so I was there, that was in 1991, I think. So at this moment, I can retrospectively look at my discovery of the Benandanti in Venice, trying to understand why I was so excited. Because uh, it was not maybe, it was not so obvious that, that those few pages uh, written by a, a late 16th century notary could have triggered uh, such a reaction. And so I tried to understand my own reaction. I was unable to understand at that moment what, which was the uh, crucial feature in the, in the trial, meaning that it took place in a uh, little town in Friuli. But uh, my, the next uh, uh, stop, the next uh, stop in my Italian tour after Venice was Udine. And so I tried to enter the ecclesiastical archive in Udine. I couldn't. The archive was not available to scholars. So I went to uh, the Biblioteca Comunale in Udine, to the town li uh, uh, library in Udine. And then I had a further lucky uh, encounter, meaning somebody had stolen a handwritten volume from the ecclesiastical archive and uh, the volume was a, an index listing the first uh, uh, thousand trials, uh, uh, inquisition trials, which took place in Friuli. Now, that unwritten list, uh, written by an inquisitor uh, in the uh, mid 18th century, that volume was stolen and then uh, uh, bought by the Biblioteca Comunale. So I was able to, let's say, have a look at a menu of a meal which was uh, unable to eat because uh, the trials were unavailable. But I looked at the trials and I discovered a lot of Benandanti. Now, what happened was that later I was able to consult the trials, more than 50 of them, some of them very long, and I was able to transcribe them, to make microfilms, to work on the book, which I ultimately published, in which I showed that uh, the inquisitor's reaction to the Benedanti was uh, first of surprise and then an attempt to turn the Benedanti, the counter witches, into witches. Now, I regarded, uh, I explained that in my view, this truly exceptional case, exceptional from a documentary point of view, pointed to a trajectory which took place in other parts of Europe as well. What was so impressive and exceptional about the case of the Benandanti was the gap between the Benandanti beliefs and the Inquisitor's expectations. In other words, the Inquisitor was completely unaware of uh, all those beliefs about uh, leaving the, uh, the body and spirit because uh, they were born in a call and so on and so forth. So all the details which I discovered in about the uh, night battles, that was the title which I suggested for the uh, 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 English translation of, the, of, of that book. So everything took place in the night, in spirit, um, experiences in access, uh, uh, unavailable to anybody except uh, to the actors. But they were, let's say, uh, described in detail and then uh, transcribed in detail by the notaries. So a truly exceptional case. Every scholar who uh, had previously argued that basically uh, witchcraft trials were, let's say, mm, uh, the projection of uh, inquisitors' expectations with no counterpart on the, on, the, on the popular side, on the peasant side, had to change their mind because, uh, I mean, this case was absolutely clear. There was a rich counterpart, rich uh, layer of popular beliefs which emerged from that gap. The gap was crucial. I think that, let's say, the relevance of the Bernardi case was accepted, but uh, nobody tried to uh, work on the Bernardi for a long time. 
and uh, I did it myself uh, uh, and I published a book in which I tried to uh, locate the Benedatti case in a much wider perspective. More recently, there has been uh, another book by an, an Italian scholar named Nardon, and he worked on the Benedatti in a different perspective, on the Benedatti trials, in a different perspective, uh, stressing, let's say, the mm, uh, not their exceptionality, but I would say mm, their family resemblances with other um, uh, characters of, um, let's say, magicians. Uh, or um, uh, So I, 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 I must say I was not particularly convinced by this approach. Certainly, I mean, witchcraft, which when I started to study uh, witchcraft was regarded as a marginal topic among historians, then became very fashionable. And this was, uh, let's say, uh, related also to a sort of growing dialogue between uh, historians and anthropologists. Although, in my view, um, I mean, the result of this dialogue should have been uh, a deeper concern for the defendant's uh, um, attitudes and beliefs, uh, which was not always the case. But, uh, I mean, I must say that now witchcraft uh, became fashionable as a topic and uh, the Benandanti became very popular in Friuli. If you look at uh, Benandanti on the web, you may find uh, a rock group in Friuli. Uh, they named themselves uh, Benandanti and so on and so forth. So, I mean, uh, mm, uh, 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 but th this is uh, peripheral. What I would regard as important is the idea that, um, well, a single case can lead to further conclusions. Um, that witchcraft uh, um, was not only a label for uh, the persecution of it, but also had a popular counterpart. And also, on a, let's say, in a broader perspective, that so-called popular culture is a very rich topic.